Thank you, Lou DeMotto. I agree. Um, money can be found if they want to find it. Uh, City Hall has always been able to find money for projects and uh, social ills and, and that, if it's a desire to have it done. Uh, the problem is the political will has not been there, and it's an unfortunate thing. We can, with the right people in council, identify our uh, social ills, help utilize and organize to better serve the public, and do so in a way that doesn't incur huge amounts of cost to the rest of the tax base. We have got to address regional government, provincial government, to assist in this undertaking. It's not a quick fix. It's going to be a long road to hope. And unless we all come together and we look at this not as a, uh, an obstacle, but as an opportunity to find solutions by bringing private and public sectors together to maximize our efforts and find genuine solutions that are long-term, uh, we're, we're going to be spinning our wheels in the mud. So, thank you. Bill Lover? Yeah, I, I'm just thinking of the councillor's car allowance. $4,500 a year apiece. There are 11 councillors. This is more than $450,000 a year that we spend for councillor's car allowance. Now, I never, never got paid for my car in my job when I go from one meeting to the other. And there were minimal driving anyway. Now, wouldn't it be better if the council set a priority, rather than looking after ourselves, that we looked after the community? And let's find a better way to spend this $450,000, maybe by supporting this organization and other organizations that are looking after the homeless in this city. I think that's a good use and a top priority for the city. Thank you. They Rose never thought of that. Rosemary McConkie. The city has all kinds of facilities um, that unfortunately they have not taken the opportunity to make work uh, and fill the gaps and the need. Uh, for instance, we are quite familiar, I hope, with the condos at the McLaughlin Center that the city has held on to and is now being uh, sued in court for the condo fees. Uh, several units there from the 1980s. Um, the Normandy Street I mentioned earlier, 66 unit building that they neglected and let go empty and now are marketing. But um, in fact, uh, one particular property I tried to save uh, was it owned by a developer in North Oshawa, a beautiful stone house. This would have been a great facility on Simple Street North known as the George McLaughlin Winfield Farms Foreman House. Uh, so many opportunities to reach out. Instead, the uh, city took $150,000 uh, and green-lighted the uh, Minto uh, application for the subdivision. And when that sort of thing, they could have engaged Minto and said, look it, we have this need in our community. This is a great property, great home. Work around it. Uh, I'm sorry, it's missing those opportunities. We've got to alert uh, people and make those connections, get those sponsors. Uh, there are people in the community that are very giving. Uh, they just don't know where to give, where to volunteer. I, um, part of my platform is to have a volunteer fair. A lot of retirees that I've encountered in my career don't know where to start. Once they retire, they want to join something, want to give. Uh, community service hours, we've got to get those connections together. Thank you. Thank you. John Henry. Um, just, a, just a comment on, on some of the things that have been said. You know, the operating budget of the mayor's office in 2009 was $297,000. The operating budget of the mayor's office in 2013 is $261,000. There are no more cars, there are no more, more credit cards. I get paid mileage when I'm on city business. I'm capped at $2,400. Anything over that, I pay myself. I want you to know that when I got elected in 2006, I signed away my severance. That I will never get a severance, but the previous mayor left office with well over $100,000. Now, I will never get a severance, I will never get a car, I don't have a credit card, I'm not allowed to sign my own expense sheets. No senior manager in the corporation is allowed to sign their own expense sheets anymore. The CAO is signed by the treasurer, mine are signed by the CAO, and every manager does that. In fact, we've changed the way we do business at City Hall to being a higher level of accountability, and then we passed it down through the corporation, and last year that resulted in a 1.19 tax increase. Total tax increases for the last year, last four years, are 50% less than the previous council. Thank you. Thank you. Lou Dumont. 
Uh, one thing that we haven't talked about is transit and, uh, you know, making transit available to our youth that uh, have difficulties and challenges getting around so that they have the opportunities to secure those jobs and uh, seek out those opportunities for accommodations and that. Uh, this past summer there was a small group that was looking for swimming passes for $77 and the mayor and the council failed to take care of a small group of people that just wanted to use the swimming pool. We can do things with in the city budget that will help our youth and helping them with transit and helping them get mobile and giving them the opportunities to seek out their future is the best way to start. It's hitting the ground running and that is a great way to give them the uh, excitement and energy to go forward. Enthusiasm. Thank you. John Gray, 45 seconds. Well, I think it's it was pound foolish by the uh, councillor. They've never they've not made any cuts this year in this term of council. Uh, it's been very clear that they've uh, rated down reserves, not contributed to the reserves, and even this year they took seven hundred and sixty thousand dollars out of fire services. They have to build a fire hall in twenty sixteen, and they used to be on track to be able to pay cash with development charges and the city's portion. And I don't think they've got that money anymore. I think that's going to be more borrowed money because of the short-term thinking. That's false economy. We've seen it before. If you really want to save the taxpayers' money, let's just start doing some responsible cuts. And that's what's going to happen next year. You know, when you talk about responsible, when you build a building, you don't build the General Motors Center and not make make the principal payments. You only made interest payments the first two years it was open. Same with the Legend Center. They build the Legend Center and they only made interest payments the first year, two years it was open. We're still trying to get through the courts. In fact, we've won one lawsuit to fix the roof on the South Oshawa Community Center. That's still in court and we have the concrete, concrete workers that built the Legend Center. That is about when you build something, if we would have built that stuff in stages over 10 years and paid for the first item, by the time we finished the fourth item, we wouldn't be in the state that we're in now. We're 10 cents of every dollar that you pay to the city services debt. John, I'll cut you to that. Um, I do want to move on to other questions, so I'm going to have one more comment by uh, Chris uh, for 45 seconds, and we'll move on to some other questions. Thank you. I spoke about some social evils. There's a big one you all know about bullying and suicide of gay youth and other young people who are bullied on Facebook and other social media. These young people need a place they can go to, the refuge and others, and hotlines that they know where to call. They also need to have psychologists covered by OHIP and Medicare because if you go to psychiatrists under OHIP, they'll give you drugs, not much counsel. It's the psychologists who help young people and they're not covered by OHIP. And we need to go to the Mr. Health and do that. 